Welcome back to The Good Life Journey. In today's video, we're providing 40 different ideas and actionable insights from the Dalai Lama that we can apply in our day-to-day -to, -day to experience fewer negative emotions and ultimately to have a more joyous and happy life. The ideas of this video are extracted from the Book of Joy, which is authored by the Dalai Lama and by Archbishop Desmond Tutu. The book is about the very purpose of life, to avoid suffering and to find happiness in life. Would you like to experience less stress, less anxiety, less frustration and less anger? If so, this is the video for you. Sit back, relax, enjoy the video and please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and to subscribe if you find value in our content. All right, let's jump right into the video. Let's see what the Dalai Lama has to say about how to achieve a joyous and happy life. One, suffering is inevitable and part of the human condition, but how we respond to that suffering is our own choice. Not even oppression or occupation can take away this freedom from us. Two, we create many of the things that undermine our own joy and happiness. It often comes from our emotional reactions, from negative tendencies of the mind, or from our inability to recognize and utilize internal resources such as mindfulness and wisdom. Three, recognizing the suffering in others diminishes our own pain. Approaching events from a wider perspective will reduce the worrying and our own suffering. We should move away from a self-centered perspective towards one that is focused on others instead. Four, trying to seek happiness through sensory gratification is like trying to quench your thirst by drinking salt water. We cannot discover lasting happiness through our senses, but only find temporary enjoyment. Five, when you're joyful and happy at the mental level, physical pain doesn't matter so much. In contrast, if there is worry and fear at the mental level, then even physical comforts and pleasure will not soothe your mental discomfort. 6. If you develop a strong sense of concern for all living beings, and particularly for humans, you will awake happy every single morning. The Dalai Lama advises us to meditate just 10 to 20 minutes on compassion to experience its lasting effects the entire day. 7. Set the following intention for your day at the start of each morning, that this day should be meaningful. Meaningful means, if possible, to serve and help others. If not, then at least to do no harm. 8. Avoid formality which only creates barriers with others. Acknowledging that we share a wish for a happy life brings us all together. If we think we are special, or if we think that we are not special enough, then we distance ourselves from our fellow humans and experience fear, nervousness, stress and anxiety. 9. Cultivating friendships is key for a joyous experience. Genuine friendship is built on trust. If you have a genuine concern for the well-being of others, then trust will come. 10. Self-centeredness distances us from others and makes us feel insecure, which leads to fear. Fear can lead to anxiety, which can develop into frustration and in extreme cases into violence. Again, changing to a wider perspective that focuses on others is the best antidote for self-centeredness. 11. Practice unbiased love toward the entire humanity. Everyone wants the same out of life, a happy existence and to reduce negative emotions. Even your enemies share these objectives. You might have to resist their actions, but you can still practice compassion toward them. 12. Much of what causes heartache is wanting reality to be different than it is. Trying to control what is unable to be controlled will lead to stress and anxiety, which can then lead to frustration and anger. 13. Learn to perceive negative actions of others as a result of their own destructive emotions. You can then develop a sense of concern and compassion and even feel sorry for the pain and suffering. Instead of feeling frustration or anger, you may then experience concern for them. 14. Stress and anxiety often come from too much ambition and expectations. When we don't fulfill the expectation or achieve the ambition, we experience frustration. From the very beginning, it's a self-centered attitude. I want this or I want that. When we have a clear picture of our capacity, then we can be more realistic about our effort. 15. Frustration and anger come from not getting what we want. We wanted something like respect or kindness, but we received something different, perhaps disrespect or criticism. Underlying this anger is the fear that we will not get what we need, that we will not be loved, that we will not be included. When we go to the root and identify how we are feeling threatened, then we are more able to soothe the anger. 16. 
Inevitable sadness and grief in life events can be used as motivation and to generate a deeper sense of purpose. When someone close passes, we can choose to have the responsibility to fulfill their wishes. If they could see us full of hope and determination, they would be happy. 17. It's important to keep a holistic view of the world and beware of the news, which highlights unusual and negative events. There are of course negative things occurring every single day, but at the same time many more positive ones take place in our world that are not newsworthy. Keep this wider perspective and sense of proportion and you will not feel despair in the face of sad events. 18. Remember a Tibetan saying that says that what causes suffering in life is how we relate to others. Envy toward the above, competitiveness toward the equal, and contempt toward the ones below. 19. Envy comes when we are too focused on material possessions and not on our true inner values. If we instead focused on experience or knowledge, then it would be much more difficult for envy to arise. But better still is to develop a genuine sense of concern for the well-being of others. Our brothers and sisters have the same right and desire to lead a happy life. Acknowledging this simple fact will allow you to rejoice in the good fortune of others. 20. In the midst of suffering, acknowledge the impermanent nature of a situation will allow us to pass through the difficulty more easily. 21. Once we accept death as normal and that sooner or later it will come, the less we will be afraid of it. Meditate daily on your own mortality and the two levels of impermanence. At the higher level, life keeps changing and things cease to exist, including us. But even at the more subtle level, acknowledge that everything is always in a constant state of flux and change. 22. There are eight important pillars related to leading a joyous life. Four represent qualities of the mind, perspective, humility, humor, and acceptance. While four are qualities of the heart, forgiveness, gratitude, compassion, and generosity. 23. Consider different events from different perspectives. The Dalai Lama's own exile is certainly a tragedy, but at the same time it allowed him personally to experience more freedom and opportunities for growth. When you look at the same event from a wider perspective, your sense of anxiety and worry will reduce, and you are left with greater joy. While changing our emotions is actually quite hard, changing our perspective is relatively easy. Ultimately, the meaning you give to what you witness will change the way you feel. 24. By stepping back and taking the long view, we will place our daily concerns in a broader perspective. Consider our world's problems in the long sweep of planetary history and it will allow us to go beyond our own self-centeredness and reduce our sense of worry and anxiety. 25. When suffering, think about people who are going or who have gone through a very similar situation. It helps sometimes to see ourselves as part of a greater whole and to remind ourselves that there are many others who are either have or are going through the very same situation as we are in now and who have not only survived but have even thrived. 26. Humility is essential to any possibility of joy. When we adopt a wider perspective, we have a natural understanding of our place in the greater scheme of things, which leads to a higher degree of humility and the recognition that we can't solve or control all aspects of life. 27. Humor is an effective tool of communication between people and it's capable of bringing down the differences and social barriers that separate us. Cultivating a sense of humility will enable us to laugh at ourselves and remind ourselves of our shared humanity. 28. Once we observe life in its wider perspective, once we see our own role in its drama with some degree of humility, and once we are able to laugh at ourselves, we are then at the process of acceptance, where we are able to accept life in all its pain, imperfection, and beauty. 29. Acceptance allows us to engage with life on its own terms, rather than wish that life were different. Unrealistic expectations of how life should be only increases stress and anxiety and leads us to struggle against the day-to-day -day current. 30. Our responsibility should be to pursue a meaningful goal with all the dedication we can muster without being fixated on a preconceived notion of a result. Sometimes our efforts may lead to unexpected outcomes that may be even better than what we had in mind. 31. When we accept the present, we can then forgive and release the desire for a different past. Forgiveness is the only way to heal ourselves and to be free from the past. 32. The power of forgiveness lies in not losing sight of the humanity of the other person while responding to the wrong with clarity and firmness. 
Where the wrong action is concerned, it may be necessary to take appropriate counteraction. However, towards the person, we can choose not to develop anger and hatred. 33. Gratitude is the recognition of all that holds us in the web of life and all that has made it possible to have the life we have and the moment we are experiencing. It is not happiness that makes us grateful. It is gratefulness that makes us happy. 34. Acceptance means not fighting reality. Gratitude means embracing reality. We move from counting our burdens to counting our blessings. It is both an antidote to envy and a recipe for appreciating our own lives. 35. Compassion is a sense of concern that arises when we are confronted with another person's suffering and feel motivated to see that suffering relieved. It is a skill that we can learn to develop and then use to extend our circle of concern beyond our immediate family to others. 36. A lack of self-compassion manifests itself in a harsh and judgmental relationship with others. People think that unless they are critical and demanding of themselves, that they will be failures and worthy of recognition and love, but this is simply not true. 37. Generosity is the natural outgrowth of compassion and expresses explicitly a fundamental aspect of our interdependence and need for each other. 38. The Buddhist tradition distinguishes three types of generosity, material giving, providing freedom from fear, and spiritual giving. The second can involve protection, counseling, or consolation, while the third involves providing your wisdom and moral teachings, helping people to be more self-sufficient and happier. 39. When we practice generosity, we practice all other pillars of joy. In generosity, we see a wider perspective in which we see our connection to others. There is a humility that recognizes our small place in the world and that another time it could be us in need. There is a sense of humor and ability to not take ourselves so seriously. There is an acceptance of life where we do not force it to be a different way. There is forgiveness of others and a gratitude for all that we have been given. And finally, we see others with compassion and desire to help those in need. And 40. The ultimate source of a meaningful life lies within ourselves and having a greater sense of responsibility and concern for others. If you live in this way, until your last breath, you will be a happy person. That, according to the Dalai Lama, is the goal of human life. All right, we made it to the end of the video. I hope you found value in some of these ideas. Please let us know in the comments below which ones resonated with you the most. And I think that's it for today. If you want to follow the Dalai Lama's advice and show gratitude, please remember to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to our journey and also to our channel where we will provide a lot of actionable tips and advice on how to lead a good life. Thanks again for staying until the end. Good luck, take care, and I hope to see you in the next video.